Over the years of our development, you know, we've had, uh, you know, we have to put a new team together. We had to put a new technology in place. We had to, you know, do everything by desks and chairs and computers. And, you know, so it was this culture of, of everybody coming together, wanting to do something great, not having the tools yet to do it and, and to express themselves. So it was, you know, it was kind of a long road. It took longer than I think anyone really thought to put all that together. You have a team that has tons of ideas uh, and not just one, and then you have to refine that down into something that's really manageable in the time that you have to make a game. So that's a little bit daunting. You know, when you have all the choices in the world, how do you choose, well, this is the one thing that we're going to do. The respawn culture really is about uh, no nonsense, uh, we're really hard on ourselves. One of the hard parts, I think, at least on Titanfall, was trying to figure out how to work as a team for a multiplayer game. The pressure was on us to really come out with something new and different, and we were sitting there going nuts, trying to wrap our heads around, okay, what does that mean? Everyone at Respawn has a voice as we're working on the game. It's not just, say, the uh, game director and lead designer say, this is what we're making, everyone just, you know, get on the treadmill and make it. It is a very iterative and collaborative process. When you work on a single player, it's relatively easy for individuals to go off and work on this level or that level, and they can exist in separate worlds for the most part. Whereas in a multiplayer game, you've got all these different people who are working on aspects of the game that will crisscross or touch each other in some way. So if someone changes something here, it will affect someone else over here and that can create a lot of tension. We have sometimes very heated arguments and there's never any hurt feelings, there's never any uh, repercussions for getting, you know, passionate about anything. It is, we all know that we can together make something great. That extends out to when we do tests with outside people. Sometimes that's really hard to do um, because it's your baby, you've been working on it for a couple years and some dude off the street comes in and tears it apart before it's not even done, but that's, that's ex extremely crucial feedback and we take all of it from no matter where it comes from. I think we have the ability and the culture that supports uh, the, the focus of perfection. So you're, you're trying to perfect the right things and you don't go after the things that you know, really don't support the gameplay. It has to feel right, it has to flow right, and if it doesn't, you know, we, we keep working on it. And there's things that, you know, if they don't get to that level, I would rather have less finely polished features than more and, and have the game be a little rougher. I think there, you know, there did come a time where we were, you know, kind of coalesced everything into, you know, like, okay, this is good, this is fun. And we saw that, you know, kind of the seeds of what would, would become Titanfall. And so the first Titan, you know, Pre-Viz was an actual maquette, um, uh, a one-six scale doll that I had encased in a dive suit, and then we we said, scratch that, why can't we make these really big and play with scale as well? But at the same time, here's the tricky part, we have to try and keep it not alienating to people who are used to playing first-person shooters and a particular kind of first-person shooter. So we thought, you know, how can we do that? So that was partly the problem of finding a new, larger design space, uh, being able to create more exotic abilities and weapons and things like that. We could see the, the visual of a grunt next to a titan and how powerful that could look, how powerful this giant can look taking cover on a building. We pour so much of ourselves into this that, you know, you, you want to put it out there and there's always that nervousness of, you know, like, I hope people like it, what are they going to think? Before we went to E3, uh, we'd been designing this game and building this game in a vacuum and we're our own worst critics, so we were really on it. We went in uh, hoping for the best. I think we were all very tense and then that moment when the trailer started to roll and everybody was watching back here at the studio and at the convention center was awesome. I was watching Gamescom and, and PAX live feed with a camera, a webcam, and I'm just, I was on the edge of my seat. That's what we love. It's, you know, putting the game together, working on it is great, but it's putting it out there in the wild and having people experience it and, and seeing what they enjoy about it. And, and that's, you know, really what drives us. It's, it's sort of amazing to watch people play that game because we don't get that moment as devs anymore. You know, we've been with this project for, uh, you know, some of us years now, and you never get to play that game for the first time like you remember. It was amazing to hear the response from it. It just blew us all away. And it just makes us work even harder. And to have everyone embrace it and say like, we understand it's familiar, yet it, it kind of pushes the boundaries and, and I get this and I want more of it. And you know, it's, it's really, it's great for the team.